Hey, Kai from ML Sound Lab here. Today I'm going to show you the differences between the eight microphones in Miko 2. I'll be running the same guitar, amp, and cabinet to keep all things equal. I'm using my Sully Guitars Baritone Alita, currently tuned to drop A sharp, into the free Amped Roots 5034 model, then into the Mars Mofo cabinet in Miko 2. We'll start by hearing each of these microphones in isolation, then later on in the video we'll experiment with blending some of them together. First is the Dynamic 57. This is the industry standard microphone. If you've heard a guitar recording before, you've probably heard the 57. It's a staple for a reason. It's well-rounded, it's incredibly versatile, and it sounds excellent with next to no effort whatsoever. Miko's recommended placement for this one is just outside the cap edge. Next is the Dynamic 421. Compared to the 57, this is a bit darker and a bit more aggressive sounding. You've got to be pretty particular about the placement of this microphone. It might sound awful on one side of the speaker, but on the other side, it might be the best mic for the job. Miko's placement recommendation for this microphone is just on the cap edge, but he's made a special note to experiment with the angle. <laughs> Next for the dynamic microphones is the Dynamic 7B. This is a microphone typically used for vocals, either podcast vocals or for harsh vocals, but it sounds great on guitar too. This is a pretty excellent microphone to get balanced guitar tones using just one mic. Miko recommends placing this one anywhere from the cap edge to dead center, so we'll try that. <laughs> Now we've got the Dynamic 906. The 906 is a 57 for people that don't like the 57. It's a little brighter sounding with a super pleasant high-end roll-off to it. Now you might find this one too harsh and piercing in isolation, but we will experiment with some blends later on to really make it shine. Miko's recommended placement for this microphone is just outside the cap edge, enough to shelve off some of those harsh frequencies. <laughs> The Dynamic U3 is a vintage variant of the Dynamic 57. It's got more mid-range and less of the low-end thump. Now this is ideal for 60s, 70s and 80s guitar tones, but I find myself picking this one up a lot for high gain tones too, in place of the 57. Now Miko recommends placing this one further from the center of the speaker than any of our other microphones, so let's give that a try. <laughs> Next is the Ribbon 121. This is a super thick sounding microphone that oftentimes doesn't sound too great on its own, but works excellently in a blend. This microphone really shines when you blend it with something like the 57 or the 906, but we'll get to that later on. For now, let's stick to Miko's recommended speaker placement for this microphone, which is somewhere near the center of the speaker. Thank you. 
the Ribbon 160 sounds like a combination of the Dynamic 57 and the Ribbon 121. It's got a great amount of low end power to it while still retaining that high end clarity. It's a super thick, powerful sounding microphone that works great in isolation. So this is usually my first choice when I'm creating a high gain guitar tone. For Miko's placement on this one, he advised that we sweep around the cap edge to find the best placement for our tone. Now the Condenser 184 is a super small condenser microphone, typically used on the drum overheads and acoustic guitars. The microphone retains a really nice natural low end depth to it, regardless of where on your cabinet it's placed. Since the physical microphone itself is so small, you can really fine tune the high end with the placement on the speaker. The 184 is another microphone that excels close to the center of the speaker. We'll experiment with placements around dead center up to the cap edge. Now, I promised we'd get some blends going, so let's try a couple out. Firstly, we're gonna try the 906 with the 121. This is a great first blend to try out since the stark contrast means they blend together really nicely. The 906 gives a nice high-end aggression to it, while the 121 holds down the low-end power. Let's hear how they sound together. Firstly, we'll place the 121 back where we had it before. Now we're gonna add a new microphone, so we'll add the 906, and we'll place it just outside of the cap edge. Now let's try out Miko's favorite pairing, the 421 with the 57. As you might have seen from scrolling through the stock presets, Miko likes to use this one a lot. You can get a really great balanced sound, which works especially well for high gain guitars. Let's add the 57 in the cap edge, then let's add the 421 around the same spot. Lastly, I'd like to mention a three mic blend that I particularly like. Now, as I said before, the 160 is my personal favorite microphone to use on its own, but it also works excellently in a blend. The U3 adds a little bit of that high-end sparkle, while the 184 adds a little bit more beefiness to it. Let's start by adding in the 160 and making sure that sounds nice and balanced. <laughs> Now we'll add in the 184. Now let's add the U3. So that's everything I've got for this video. I'd love to hear which of these was your favorite in the comment section down below.